Well, good morning. Thanks for joining us today for your word for the day. You know, I don't know about you, but I enjoy reading about conspiracy theories. I don't necessarily subscribe to many of them or to buy into them, but I find it so fascinating reading about these different conspiracy theories and learning about them and where they came from and what ideas they have. And some of them are so far-fetched, it's like reading a thick fiction novel, while others are put together in such a way that you question whether or not it's a history book. But here's the thing. Almost every conspiracy theory I've read through is a situation of people wrapped up in and upset about something that doesn't have any significance to our life today. From the moon landing to Princess Diana's death to Area 51 and the JFK assassination, we have so many people wrapped up in things that no longer have any bearing on our life here today. And while I would love for this to, to be an episode fully about some conspiracy theories, even some new ones that I discovered recently, here's the point of why I bring this up. We have that same tension in the Christian circle of life. We can get so wrapped up in things that don't actually matter. We can get upset and argue about worship styles and denominations and end times. If you're from the Bible Belt, it's about dancing and alcohol. It's about what clothing you should wear to church or Bible translations or about Calvinism versus Arminianism. And these are nothing new. From the formation of the Christian church after Jesus' death, Christians have found things to focus on that were not profitable. In fact, as Paul is writing to Titus and giving some final instructions to Titus as he leads his church, he says this in Titus 3, verse 9. He says, But avoid foolish controversies, genealogies, dissensions, and quarrels about the law, for they are unprofitable and worthless. See, he tells Titus to avoid the controversies of this day, which are around the study and interpretation of genealogies, you know, those things that you feel a little guilty about skipping over in the Old Testament. They fought about those. They fought about who were the better, better apostles and, and how they should follow and respond to the Old Testament laws. And here Paul tells them to avoid all of this. Why? Is it because he's afraid they'll find some hidden truth in the conspiracy? No. It's because Paul understood that these things are unprofitable and worthless. See, what Paul is encouraging them to do is to focus on keeping the main thing the main thing. And what is the main thing, you may ask? Well, it's exactly what he reminded Titus about just a few verses before this. Listen to what he says. He says in verse 3, We ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, He saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. See, the main thing for us to remember is that we are in need of a Savior. And the loving kindness of God came into our life and brought a Savior in the person of Jesus. We have hope and purpose in Jesus now, and our focus should not be to focus on the things that are worthless and unprofitable in life, but to focus on Jesus and serving and following Him and making Him known to the people in our life. So next time you feel yourself getting wrapped up in something, let me encourage you to ask yourself a question. Does this help the lost come to know Jesus better? Does me focusing on this help the lost come to Jesus? If no, there's a good chance it's not profitable for you to dive into it. See, it may not be profitable for uh, the mission of Jesus to argue about your favorite worship style or, or why you believe in the timing of the rapture or why your favorite Bible translation is the only correct one. Because none of those things help accomplish the person or the, the purpose rather of Jesus, which is to seek and to save the lost. So let's remember to put Jesus and his mission as the forefront of our purpose so that we can glorify and honor him with our life. Hope that you have a great and profitable day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.